Oh, hello everybody. I'm Boaz Feiler and I'm an evolutionary astrologer. And this is the evolutionary astrology message for the week between the 7th and the 14th of April 2018. So what is the celestial picture like? Well, we have a lot of planets in Aries, which is a very carnal male energy in the sky. So all our carnal sides are our more basic needs the ones that are um, primordial in a sense that talk about survival and talk about our desires and if we want to take it a little higher then talk about her essence and our goals our entrepreneurship in life our creativity our heightened so this is a demanding energy. This is an energy that demands development, that demands action, that demands forward movement. Excuse me. And we can feel challenged by all this male energy around us. Other than that, squaring all that Aryan energy, all these planets in Aries, we have three planets in Capricorn. We have Pluto, and then we have Saturn, and then we have uh, Mars conjunct Saturn and they are like a big stop sign you're not mature enough you know you better sleep on it another night and fix it and then you can go on your road and, and, and so they're like a big stop sign in a sense and that conjunction between uh, uh, Mars and Saturn I've talked about it with Michael Affick in a long video last week we're gonna keep it a lot shorter this week and, and uh, I want to thank again Michael for joining me at that video. It was wonderful, a wonderful talk. And if you want to know more about the conjunction, watch the video from last week. But this is a kind of conjunction that can make us feel like we want to push the gas, that forward movement that I've been talking about, wanting to deliver something into this world, and pushing the brakes at the same time, or maybe even uh, getting the brakes pushed for us at the same time. It's a sense that we encounter feedback or it could be even an inner discourse between ourselves and we understand that the product or the idea or the deed is not mature enough, that it still isn't up to par with the rules of nature, with reality, that it's not sustainable, that it, it wouldn't breathe on its, on its own. And I get this cold shower, you know, and, and, and all my enthusiasm goes away. It's not fully delivered into the world just yet. And what this causes me is to act in a much more consistent and a much more strategic and a much more adult fashion. And that's where the challenge is. That's where the demanding energy is. And it's squaring all that Aries energy as well. So we have a few important uh, transits on this week and next week. My God, there's more. <laughs> let's let's concentrate about this week. Saturday, the seventh, we have Venus trying Saturn. We come from a month and a half of turbulations in relationships. Finally, we're getting into quieter, more stable water. With that Venus trying Saturn, we could actually work strategically within our relationships. And when I say relationships. I mean our intimate relationships and our friendships and our work relationships as well. This is a good time for career um, developments, for strategic thinking and action within your work environments. So we have Venus trying Saturn. We're going to feel it all through the week. And it's a time that we can mend bridges, that things become more stable, that we can look at the long-term effects of things that we become much more composed and adult and reliable that we can actually abide by our own rules by the rules that we ourselves set for ourselves because we know better because we're learned 
because we've learned from our experiences. So this is a time that we can be better boys or girls. And that, of course, is beneficial for our relationships as well. And on Saturday, we have a Capricorn moon trying... Oops, sorry, something moved here. Uh, okay, yeah. So we have a, a, a Capricorn moon trying Venus again. Good day for relationships. Good day to be a little bit more composed and reliable and, and just be more satisfied about what there is on contrary to what we would like or what we're afraid of. The only thing is that this moon is going to conjunct Saturn, Mars and square Mercury as well a little later. And that means that we could be either too judgmental or we could lack self value or self-esteem that day or both and we need to be careful not to be bitter judges and to to not judge things emotionally to if we i mean it's a good day to employ our judgment in a logical fashion just a, a little bit distant from our own feelings and cravings about things and the sa saturday the seventh is not a good day to make decisions Sunday, the 8th, we're entering a third quarter moon. This is already a much more adult phase of the moon. It's about maturing and, and focusing. And um, it's a Capricorn moon as well. So it's a, it's a great day if you do work Sundays to actually take things ahead with your work, with your career, to take responsibility upon your shoulders and gladly carry it through. Um, but, and here's a but, um, at the afternoon, evening time, I want you to let go. I want you to allow yourselves to rest and free yourself of whatever it is. Because the moon is going to be on Pluto and we can, be, we can become too intense, we can become too obsessed with things and we need to distance ourselves a little bit again from the drama or from our feelings and see things in a little um, detached manner. Monday, the 9th, we have an Aquarius moon squaring Uranus. Um, early morning in, uh, in Europe and uh, the evening of the 8th in the United States. And that's a time that we have no patience whatsoever. We could really, really... Uh, uh, lose our tempers and we need to watch not to be too cruel okay this is not a very uh, I mean we're not going to get angry with someone but we could be very cold with someone and very detached and very cruel with our speech and and put someone down or make someone feel as if they're very small or someone can try and make us feel that way so I would say in the morning time of the 9th or the night time of the 8th, if you are in the States, employ more compassion, employ more heart. Tuesday, the 10th, we have an emotional day with the moon on the south node, squaring Venus at noon time. This is a time that we could be unsatisfied with our relationships or just unsatisfied but it is also a time these days when the moon is in Aquarius that we can think outside the box and, and, and see things differently and be, uh, have some genius ideas of how to solve problems that we've been dealing with for a long time. So the 9th and the 10th are also good for that. Wednesday the 11th, moon still in Aquarius, squaring Jupiter. It's a day to be careful not to be too extravagant or to lack tact or diplomacy. It's a day to make sure that we're not coming off as too sure or too proud, as vain. It is a day for adventures. It is a day to enjoy yourself, but not too much. To know when to stop, to stop indulging and generally not jump too high, too far, too soon. And Venus is going to trine Mars exactly on that day and the Sun is going to square Pluto exactly on that day. 
let's begin with the sun square Pluto because it's it's a it's a much easier transit for me to I, I mean it's 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 a much shorter depiction of a transit well sun square Pluto adds up to the intensity of these days and as we talked about these are already intense days because of all that Aries energy so the Pluto squaring the Sun adds up to that some fuel to that bonfire and it makes things much deeper and transformative it's as if we're going through these turbulations in order to transform. There's a price we're paying, but it, it is worth it. It can be worth it. And it's also a time that great changes can, can, can appear in our life, especially in our personal life or in the things we do or how we perceive ourselves. It's a time that we do have to be careful not to be too intense, or too obsessed with things, and, and to know when to cut corners. It's a time that we should be more careful from um, exhausting ourselves and getting hurt in the process or from accidents. And it's also adding up to those male energies that we're talk we talked about before and we can become more psychological or more sexual at these days. And the Venus trying uh, Mars is a joyous, joyous conjunct, uh, joyous meeting between the male and the female. I mean, these two planets who are usually opposites, male and female, sitting on Aries and Libra, two sides of the zodiac. As Michael Offick and I talked about uh, last week, and Michael stated so very beautifully, they're now in a trine. They're coming together. And they're coming together in, in, in what is the epiphany or the dream of the male archetype or the female archetype. Venus is in Taurus. Okay, That's her own house. That's her own home. She's very connected to her resources. She's indulgent. She's sensual. She loves it. And she loves loving it. This is the time that the Venusian ceremonies of fertility in ancient cultures used to take place when Venus enters Taurus, when springtime is at its height, when the flowering and the fruiting and the grass and the sun return to the northern hemisphere. And in ancient times, you know, in, in, in Mesopotamia, Babylonia, um, Venus was named Ishtar. And when Constantine, Emperor Constantine uh, of Greece, uh, had to make his Roman Empire pagan, uh, I'm sorry, so he was not of Greece, he was a Roman Emperor. Uh, so, and when he wanted to make the Roman Empire from pagan to Christian, he held up the Nicene Council. And in the Nicene Council, they took all the pagan uh, holidays that were celebrated up to that time, including the Venusian or Ishtar holiday uh, that had to do with fertility and had a lot of symbols like rabbits and eggs and uh, grapes and vulvas, you know, female organs <laughs> and phalluses or flowers or, uh, um, or uh, many, many different symbols of fertility and of this joyous coming back of life to earth. You see, they didn't see it as something despicable or, or sinful back then. They saw it as something sacred. And the principle of pleasure was celebrated at this time. This would be the time that we would all go out naked into the field and make love around the bonfire. Georgia, did you just acknowledge that? No, I didn't literally mean it. No, there, there's no kids watching. Who's watching this one? My God. It's only adults. Anyway. So, um, Georgia is uh, my parental uh, advisory sometimes. <laughs> Aren't you? So this would be the time that we would celebrate love, that we would celebrate life, that we would celebrate fertility in its most philosophical and metaphoric form, as well as in its most, most carnal form. We would eat and drink 
and and fest and fuck and just be in a state of gratitude for the fact that we are breathing and alive and that space of gratitude was so important that ancient cultures and so sacred that the ancient cultures decided to emphasize it Judo, Judo Christianity as well as Islam decided to castrate it and hide it and make it sinful but we're past the 20th century and hopefully we're getting into the Aquarian age so what else so Venus trine Mars so Venus is in Taurus and in a sense she's very sensual sexual and she enjoys it this is her time to blossom you can't say that this Venus or this female is in heat and what about Mars coming to meet that Venus he is in Capricorn he is considered by ancient astrologers exalted in Capricorn but evolutionary astrology would say he's much more responsible there he's much more consistent he's much more aware of how his actions uh, uh, affect all of the people around him so we have the dream of every female finally the stupid boy grew up and became mature and consistent and strategic and reliable and responsible and faithful and on the other hand we have the the, the epitome of the male dream finally that frigid woman is, is in heat so they're both extremely happy to meet each other. What am I saying? We've been talking about how intense these times are. You're allowed to have a little fun. Enjoy yourselves. Don't overdo it, but enjoy yourselves. Find good people and celebrate life. Like Prem Rawat, my teacher for uh, meditation and inner peace, Look him up on YouTube, is amazing. Prem Rawat, P-R-E-M-R-A-W-A-T, always says, we have no guarantee when our breath is actually going to cease. No guarantee. And I remember Prem Rawat speaking and sharing that he saw a movie about a man with... Um, cystic fibrosis or something I think the disease that causes you to lose your muscle tones and, and become more and more um, like Stephen Hawking had but, but uh, usually it goes a lot faster until you die and through this movie this, this man said that when he won't be able to be independent he would like to be disconnected from the machines and, and die. And the movie finishes with him connected to all the machines, including one that uh, inflates and deflates his lungs, while he says, what a powerful thing is breath. And that was about the only thing that he, could, he couldn't move, he couldn't speak, you know, he communicated through blinking. And that's what he said. What a powerful thing is breath. So, celebrate the fact that you're alive. Love. Make love with life. And I don't mean it only in the literal sense. I want you to enjoy being within the physical plane. Within the body. And of course, don't overdo it. Don't eat all the jellies. Because you'll have a stomachache. Uh, leave some for me. <laughs> I don't need jellies. <laughs> they made they are made from petroleum and 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 gelatin, dead animals, not healthy for me. So Thursday the twelfth, we have the Sun conjunct Aries. Aries is the goddess of mischief, is the goddess of fighting and arguments. And we can feel that all through this week, it just adds up to the intensity. We have to really be careful with how we state things. 
Aries had the capability to see the uncomfortable truth as it is and present it to people totally uh, not caring how it will be accepted or, 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 or taken by these people. She was not diplomatic at all, okay? And that's why people didn't like her. And Eris's um, evolutionary uh, challenge was to learn how to say her truth in a way that was more diplomatic, in a way that could sugarcoat that bitter pill so people can actually swallow it. So especially on Thursday, but also Wednesday and Friday, be careful from being too argumentative. Be careful from saying things you might be sorry for. Think before you open your mouth. And don't be too pushy, don't be violent, and be careful from violent people either verbally or physically. Friday the 13th, we all know, legend says, uh, was the crucifixion day of Jesus Christ. But astrologically speaking, this could be a pleasant day, at least until the nighttime. We have a lot of sextiles in the sky and even a trine to Jupiter. It would be a very pleasant day and uh, a good day to spend amongst people as well. Um, it's a day that the moon is conjunct, conjunct Juno, so I would dedicate this day for my love, for someone I am in a long-term relationship with, or someone that I have a dedicated relationship with, or something I have a dedicated relationship with. Because Juno is all about things that I'm faithful to for a long time in my life, or people. So I would dedicate this day to them. Nighttime is sensitive because the moon is conjunct Chiron. Nighttime in Europe, that's morning to noontime in the States. And when the moon is conjunct Chiron, we could meet our old, very intimate pains. We could be much more sensitive to those pains. And people can be much more sensitive in general, so we have to be careful with how we treat people as well. Saturday the 14th, we have Jupiter sextile Pluto and Mars sextile Neptune. This is an influence that we are already feeling and we feel next week as well. It's a subtle influence, but this is the influence that makes us understand that there is a value to all the suffering and challenges that we're going through right now. And that there is a value for us keeping on challenging ourselves. Not only that, it's the, it's the energy, it's the fuel, and it's the raison d'etre that allows us, to, allows us to keep on coping with everything and fighting and, and, and transcending things. And it's a, so the Jupiter sextile Pluto is about discovering our inner strength, and the Mars sextile Neptune is about flowing with things a lot easily, a, a lot more easily, and, and be, becoming a little bit more subtle about things. And, and, and more spiritual, and more creative, and more artistic. And understanding that it's not all up to us, that it's not all in our control, and some of it is up to great spirit, and to people around us, and the masses, and, and the world at large, and God. The moon is going to conjunct Mercury at noontime, so we could be a little scattered, we could talk too much, <laughs> <laughs> we have interesting conversations though and it's going to square Saturn in the evening so be careful don't be too judgmental and um, if you are using your judgment um, step away a step from your um, emotions and become a little more logical with how you judge things but generally speaking um, it would be a time to take it a little more easily Saturday night and and I wouldn't put too much on my table Saturday night I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't make it uh, too much of a busy schedule I'm mentioning the fact that on the 15th Sunday we have a new moon in Aries and I just want to state that we'll be talking about it in the next video but I just want to state that because Friday and Saturday be really aware of the energies that pass through you because these energies are imprinted, in a way, into the next lunar cycle of, uh, of, of the next month, 
28 and a half days or 29 and a half days. So try and keep your vessel clean as possible during Friday and Saturday already. Of course on Sunday. I want to thank you for listening. I want to tell you that your comments and your shares and your likes are your way of paying me back in a sense for the information that I'm giving out because A, I really appreciate it and B, it's the only way these videos are getting uh, shown to more people and spread over Facebook. So I really appreciate it and thank you very, very much for doing it. And again, for private lessons, for groups in English, for beginners and intermediate uh, in evolutionary astrology through your computer or phone, and for any question you might have, you are always welcome to contact me. And thank you. Thank you for listening. And may you have a wonderful, magical, beautiful week ahead. This is Boaz Feiler signing off and happy spring holidays. Bye-bye.